Now, we're going to be talking about, shortly, about these peculiar processes that happen during, only during meiosis. So, so, but before we do that, um, very quickly, I also wanted to review what is the whole point of having chromosomes, period. All right? It's a good time to make that, to make that connection. Chromosomes are packaged DNA molecules, right? So the whole point of having chromosomes is to allow the DNA to be moved easily. Another thing of that is that if you had all our DNA in one continuous DNA molecule, it would be huge and unmanageable. So instead of having one continuous DNA molecule the way the bacterial cells have, one circular molecule, we have the, our DNA split into chunks of 23 different types of chromosomes. Now, another thing that comes out of that is that when the homologs separate, and you saw that happening in the meiosis, every gene that's inside that chromosome separates together with the other genes inside that chromosome. So let's say, for example, you, the gene for hair color and skin color and eye color are all inside the same chromosome. They will travel together which is why certain traits have the tendency to show up together because the chromosomes travel together during meiosis and so any gene inside that one chromosome will be together with all the other genes which are traveling inside that chromosome All right, and then remember that basic parts that we review on the mitosis lecture and the difference between a singular normal chromosome looking and the duplicated ones you're seeing during actual division all right, and also remember that all chromosomes have multiple, multiple genes inside of them. Now, also, going back to um, one thing that I wanted to show you, the difference between anaphase 1 and 2. Notice that anaphase 1 is, sep is going to be separating homologs, while anaphase 2 is separation of chromatids. Make sure you're clear about that, and make sure that you understand, too, that the whole process is causing a reduction on the number of, of uh, chromosomes in the cell. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. So instead of mitosis, where the cells end up exactly like the mother cells, these cells will look completely different and also will be half of the original mother cell. So we'll, we'll do that. Now let's talk about some of these processes which are unique to me meiosis, which lead to the variation, uh, which is why this process even evolved. This process evolved to foster the variation uh, involved in the sexual reproduction process. So let's look at that. The first thing that will add to variation is the idea of crossing over. When doing prophase one, between prophase one and metaphase, homolog pairs uh, pair up, and that happens because of specific attractions between sequences of DNA, which are pretty much similar because they're the same, pretty much DNA. They're about the same thing. So these homolog sequences will pair up, and attractions between the homologs will cause them to stick together. The pieces will detach. Some pieces will detach and cross over or switch places to the other side. So, you, And by doing that, uh, what you actually end up with is... So the first one I want to talk about is this whole thing about crossing over. And crossing over leads to genetic variation. You see here two different, three different views of the same thing, which is crossing over. But basically, it all starts with those homologs pairing up next to each other. Now, that pairing up actually works because the homologs are attracted to each other because they have base sequences which are similar because they have the same genes and therefore the same codes. And a lot of those, those codes are attracted to each other because of complementary DNA rules. We'll talk about that when we do DNA structure. And so it will cause the homologs to actually line up. Now, when they line up, they, they form what is called a chiasma or a connection where the, they kind of call themselves up. And then when they call themselves up, synapsis happens, which is the actual exchange of, of, of the DNA, which causes crossing over. So what happens is that enzymes will go and cut DNA, DNA in certain pieces and then exchange mm -hmm. that DNA between the homologs which means some of the DNA that was in the original homolog, let's say for example up here the yellow represents maternal uh, DNA and the, the, the blue represents paternal DNA so that would be the DNA you got from your mom and the DNA you got from your dad. When you're making your gamete cell through meiosis this crossing over will take place which means the, the homologs which come out of crossing over are no longer your mom's um, homolog or your dad's homolog, it will be a mom homolog with a piece of dad and vice versa. Now, what does that do? 
when we do separation of homologs, we'll talk about what, how that creates variability. But basically what you're doing is you're jumbling up the genetic information and making sure that the genes which came from mom, some of them mixed up with the genes that came from dad in the chromosomes that came from mom. So you're, you're getting this genetic exchange which is going to create more variation. All right? So that's what crossing over is all about. The one more thing I want to talk about crossing over is that this is more likely to happen uh, in areas which are far from each other. So that means if a crossover happened here, another crossover event is probably only going to happen far from what the previous event happened. You're not going to get you're going to get too much of a traffic jam jam if you have crossing overs happening all close to each other. So it's very rare to see several genes crossing over next which are genes next to each other usually when a gene crosses over a gene really far from that gene will cross over as well okay now another thing that leads to variation is the actual separation of homologs so notice here that there's the when you undergo meiosis doing metaphase one uh the the met the homologs line up in the actual equator and then separate but take, let's look at this if i line up like that right i will get all the blues one side and all the reds on the other side. But if I line up like that, I will get one side half blue, half red, one side half, half blue, half red. So this time, these cells are all look like dad and these cells all look like mom. And then on this side, the cells all look like half mom, half dad. These cells like half mom, like half, half dad. You know? And so what this drawing is trying to show you is that since the, the separation of homologs is random, you make sure that even if you get chromosome 1 coming from dad uh, on that gamete, chromosome 2 will probably not come from dad as well. And chromosome 3 will probably not come from dad as well. Chromosome 4 will probably not come from dad as well. So the chances are that some chromosomes in the gamete will come from dad, some of the chromosomes in the gamete will come from mom. And since you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, chances that all 23 pairs come from one parental DNA is not going to be possible so that leads to more recombination you are never going to donate to your child only your grandfather or, or his grandfather or your, or your dad you donate half of you it, and the chances are that half of it's from mom half of it's from dad because of that random separation of homologs and that's what this is all about if you have 23 pairs so really quickly if you go back here to the carrier type and you see that there's 23 pairs when you split these pairs up chances are maybe this one will go to this maybe that one will go to the gamut this maybe this one will go to the gamut it's always a fifth shot so that means that more than likely you're not going to get the maternal one going to the, to the one gamete and a paternal one going to the other but you're going to get a mix each gamete is going to have a mixture of paternal and maternal uh, chromosome uh, homologs in its mix right which was going to cause more variation you're never going to be a, give to your child a copy of your dad or just half the dad you're going to give a copy of half the dad half the mom so you're going to mix everything up in your gamete all right now remember now when we talked about the crossing over again that the crossing over makes sure that even the homologue that you actually donate part of that homologue also has the piece from mom so let's say for example you, you look at chromosome one right chromosome type one 50-50 shot that you're going to get the mom or the dad version. So you have the DNA that came from your mom, the DNA that came from your dad. Are you going to give to your child the one that came from your mom or the one that came from your dad? Well, there's a 50-50 shot of either, right? And chances are that if you give this one from your mom, but number two might not be the same way. So that's the whole point we just talked about. But at the same time, remember that because of crossing over, even if you give the paternal one to the, to the gamete, some of the maternal one went with it because of the crossing over, which is why you have even more variation because of this. So crossing over and independent assortment or separation of homologs by randomly makes sure to create more variation for the cell. And then lastly, when the actual fertilization takes place, it's random. Which sperm wins? Which egg actually gets made? So that means that the gamete encounter is completely random and chances are a random uh, um, sperm will meet a random egg which creates even more variation so 
crossing over, independent of assortment and separation of homologs and random fertilization, all create this variation in the cell. And so meiosis is the process by which uh, cells divide and create gametes for cell reproduction purposes, where each, each gamete is actually a half cell, or a cell that um, can be used to combine with another half cell to make a new organism. So uh, it's through these processes that um, eukaryotes create a lot of their variation in addition to the mutation processes as well. So that's why um, meiosis is so important and I hope these lectures made that clear to you and I'll see you on the next video lecture. Thank you very much.